Hi students, welcome back. Today I will be teaching you on transformers. Transformer is the last section of electromagnetism chapter. So, as you can see in this slide, there are two figures. This one is the actual transformer and this one shows the inner part of the transformer. What is a transformer? Transformer is a device which converts a voltage of a certain magnitude into an increased voltage or a decreased voltage. Transformer is a device which converts amplitude of an alternating EMF to an increased level or a decreased level. It works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. It is having, as you can see in this figure, it is having a primary coil and a secondary coil winding. The alternating voltage whose magnitude is to be changed or whose magnitude has to be increased or decreased is supplied at the primary coil terminals and the output or the voltage, desired voltage is obtained at the terminals of the secondary coil. It works on principle of electromagnetic induction. So let's see what are the parts of a transformer. Basically, it, it has three parts as you can see. One is this primary coil winding, second one is secondary coil winding and there is a inner soft iron core. This inner soft iron core is being shown in this, the second figure as a magnified one. Let's see. Parts of transformer consist of a rectangular soft iron core. This one made up of thin laminated sheets of soft iron of T and U shape placed alternately one above the another and insulated from each other by a paint. These laminated sheets are insulated from each other by a paint or coating over them. On one arm of the coil of an insulated copper wire is wound. See this is the laminated core on one side a insulated copper wire is wound and the coil is connected with the source of alternating EMF. Here, uh, this coil is connected to the source of primary voltage or alternating EMF means alternating voltage. And similarly, uh, on the other arm of the core, this another cop, uh, copper insulated wire is wound and this is known as secondary coil. And across this terminals, we can get the output voltage. One more thing, children, the number of turns in the primary coil differs from the number of turns in the secondary coil. The ratio of the number of turns of secondary coil to the number of turns in the primary is known as turns ratio. What are the parts? There are three parts. Iron core, which is a laminated core of soft iron and then a primary winding of insulated copper wires wound around this arm. This is primary winding and this uh, this one is secondary winding, the same insulated copper wire, but the number of turns in the primary and secondary are different. Now let's see, points to remember. As we have already studied that the core consists of laminated sheets and they are insulated by paint. This laminated core prevents the loss of energy due to eddy currents. What is eddy current? There is a, a current produced because of this, uh, if we place all the sheets together, there will be a current produced and it will cause loss in energy. What is that current? When you will go to a higher classes and you will learn more physics, you will come to know about what is eddy current and we have a different formula. There is a separate formula for calculating eddy currents that you will be studying in your higher classes. But as for now, you have just remember that the laminated core prevents the loss of energy due to eddy current. Now, as we can see, this figure, this path is totally closed, right? There is no opening. So, this closed path prevents energy loss due to magnetic flux. The whole magnetic flux linked with this is used here. So, there is no loss in magnetic flux. So, energy lost it gets minimized. Secondly, the core is made of soft iron. This prevents the hysteresis loss of energy. 
so these are the points which you have to remember now uh, we have to understand how does this transformer works first children uh, as you have already studied whenever a current flows through a conducting wire a magnetic flux or magnetic field is produced around it do you remember this part of the first part of electromagnetism chapter that whenever whenever a, a current flows through a conducting wire a magnetic field is induced around it this is how we can produced a electromagnet right so here what happens there is a coil primary winding coil here is another coil secondary winding coil so what happens when we supply a current or a voltage is applied across this primary winding what happens voltage applied means current will flow through it current flows through this winding so whenever current flows through a conductor or a winding what happens it produces a magnetic field around it or a magnetic flux is produced around it this voltage is what alternating type alternating type means it changes its polarity one time positive one time negative right this voltage is alternating time so the current produced here or in this winding is also alternating type and one more thing what happens here what happens that uh, this current produces a magnetic flux around it right and that flux is also a changing type or there is a variation in the magnetic flux since the voltage applied is alternating or changing or varying varying type the current produced here is also a varying type and the current produced in this winding is since it is of wiring type it produces it produces the uh, magnetic flux of wiring type and what does faraday tells us faraday tells us that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux or there is variation in magnetic flux what happens a current flows or a current is induced in the coil right so when there is a change in magnetic flux here the magnetic flux is produced but it is constantly changing it is not constant it is changing or it is variating variation variation takes place so this varying magnetic flux produces a current in this secondary winding and when current is produced here what happens again it will flow through this current and it will produce a voltage here right in the secondary winding and we get a voltage here this is how it works let's read it whenever the terminals of primary coil are connected to the source of alternating emf a varying current flows through the primary coil this varying current varying current as i have already said alternating one means varying this varying current produces a varying magnetic field in the core of transformer thus the magnetic flux linked with the secondary coil always varies the change of magnetic field lines through the secondary coil induces a voltage in it this induced voltage varies in the same manner as the applied emf or applied voltage in the primary coil varies and thus has the same frequency as that of the applied emf or em voltage did you understand let me explain you once more suppose there is a voltage given at the primary winding voltage means there is a current flowing through it current flows through it and we have studied that whenever current flows through a conducting wire what happens conducting wire there is a magnetic field produced around it so it produces a magnetic field at the core of the transformer right and this magnetic field is of varying nature why it is of varying nature because we have applied a varying voltage here varying voltage produces a varying current and varying current produces a varying magnetic field and faraday have told that whenever there is a varying varying current or a varying voltage what it produces it induced a varying voltage in the secondary and that varying voltage is certainly depend upon the primary voltage applied here right this is the principle and it has also the same frequency as the voltage applied in the primary winding so this is the principle of transformer
let's see for a transformer what happens that the voltage in the secondary by the voltage in the primary is equal to the number of turns number of turns in the secondary winding to the ratio uh, sorry again let me tell you this uh, voltage in the secondary to the voltage in the primary is equal to the number of turns in the secondary to the number of turns in the primary and this is known as turns ratio as you can see here again turn ratio is what voltage in primary by voltage in secondary is equal to voltage in number of turns in primary by number of turns in secondary so what we can get from this one vs is equal to vs is equal to putting it here what happens vp into ns by np so this is the formula which you have to always remember let's see what are the factors on which the voltage induced in the secondary depends as we have studied the formula it tells us clearly that it depends upon the voltage of the primary and then the turn ratio for an ideal transformer there is no energy loss so whatever uh, energy conservation of energy what does it states there is or never a loss in energy whatever energy is given is obtained at the output so here for an ideal transformer it says that there is no energy loss so the output power will be always equal to the input power so power in the secondary coil is always equal to the primary coil what is power voltage into current voltage in the secondary current in the secondary is equal to voltage in the primary into current in the primary this is power and this is power power in the secondary is equal to power in the primary in case of an ideal transformer so as i have already said that transformer is used to increase a voltage or decrease a voltage to a certain level right so there are two types of transformer one is step up whenever we want to increase a voltage increase a voltage to a certain level we use a step up transformer and whenever we want to decrease a voltage to a certain level then we use a step down transformer one more thing in a step up transformer what happens the primary coil has more number of turns sorry the primary coil has less number of turns and the secondary coil has more number of turns because we are increasing here whereas in the step down the primary one has more number of turns and the secondary one has less number of turns we know that what es that secondary voltage by primary voltage is equal to voltage uh, turns in the secondary by turns in the primary we know that we have already studied this is the transformer ratio or the turns ratio right for step up transformer what happens step up means we have to increase it means the voltage output voltage is higher than the input voltage so what happens the secondary voltage is always higher for a always higher than the primary voltage similarly for step down what happens always the primary voltage is higher than the secondary voltage what happens for turns ratio turns ratio is always greater than 1 why because always the secondary turns is greater than the primary number of turns similarly turns ratio for step down is always less than 1 from the relation of ideal transformer what power in the secondary is equal to power in the primary from here what we know that uh, for step up transformer always secondary voltage is higher if this is higher means this quantity is less so current flowing is less what we got no, uh, secondary current is less than primary similarly for this one for step down what we get For for step down, what we know that uh, the secondary voltage is always less than the primary voltage. If this one is less, means current is higher quantity. So I P is always greater than I S, right? So more current flows than in secondary coil. So these are the two types of transformer. So let's see what are the uses of transformer. Transformer has various uses, 
as we can see transformer there are two types of uses for transformer for step up uses in transmission of electric power at the power generating station to step up the voltage in power generation what uh, the supplied voltage is like 22000 volt and uh, the amount has to be reduced or accelerated in certain cases there, there will be loss in energy and it has to be accelerated so what we use step up whenever there is a, when we have to decrease the voltage the voltage we receive at our home is 220 volt but the voltage at the generating station is 22000 volt so uh, whenever we receive at, at our home what what transformer we need we need a step down transformer but suppose uh, there is a generator which produces uh, 500 volt suppose and we need um, a battery to be operated at uh, suppose 20 uh, suppose 25 volts so here also step down transformer suppose we have a 25 voltage and we have to increase it to 22000 so what we will use your step up transformer so in transmission of electric power we need both step up and step down transformer step up transformer is al also used in television wireless sets x-ray tubes and step down transformer is used in electric bells night electric bulbs mobile phones computers and etc so these are the uses of transformers if you have any further questions please post in the comment section of the video i will soon upload a video answering those questions thank you for watching do like and subscribe my channel